Muses of Mythology is a spoiler-heavy podcast. That's an understatement. We're going to discuss not just the events of this book, but the Rydenverse as a whole, and really anything that we feel is relevant. You can find full spoiler warnings in the show notes. There's also a book I read many years ago called The Goddess Test. It's part of a trilogy. I do not recommend this series. It's messy. We may <laughs> do a Remoth episode about it one time if I want to, you and I just to scream about things. Yeah. Welcome to Muse of Mythology, a podcast where we explore how ancient myths become part of modern pop culture through the lens of Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. This is Story 71, Persephone. I'm your co-host and podcasting muse, Darian Smart. Joining me is my co-host and brother, DJ. How's everybody doing today? I am the muse of villainy. Interesting. Uh, The story of Persephone is pretty villainous. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> and I think... Uh, I don't mean a Persephone yourself. I mean the taking of Persephone. No, no, no. I got you. I got yeah. you. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pay her some proper tribute by musing around in the garden for a minute. All right. DJ, I'm really excited for this episode. I know you are. I like Persephone a whole lot. Yeah. Persephone is literally one of the reasons why I wanted to start this this whole podcast. Because <laughs> I was so annoyed with people on the internet. Yeah, you were annoyed with the guys coming into your... Uh, at the time... Um, Facebook page mm-hmm. and just shitting on Laura Olympus for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah, a lot. A lot of bad faith, poor takes. Yes. A very unimpressive level of quote unquote understanding about Greek mythology and storytelling. Yeah. So, yeah. But let's begin. DJ. What's up? What do you remember about Persephone in the Percy Jackson books? I remember specifically from Last Olympian. Mm hmm. That she wasn't happy with the current situation, but just felt that she also couldn't do much about it. Yeah. She's not. <laughs> a war's on the brink and Hades is willing to take her mother in, mm-hmm. which it seems that she's not the biggest fan of her mother either. Yeah. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Riordan's take portrayal. on portrayal of Persephone in The Last it's Olympian. It's just his portrayal of her personality and it's... Yeah. It's, yeah. it's weird because it's summertime. Yeah. So she shouldn't be in the underworld. But there's a war on. But there's a war on, and Hades is like, you and your mom should just stay down here where it's safe. Which, like, here's the thing. It probably is the safest space. No, I'm I'm actually into that as, like, a. <laughs> I think it's a very interesting concept. Especially because, like, Hades isn't siding with... He's not against the other Olympians, but mm-hmm. he's not siding or supporting them. So it's in his best interest to stay away as Kronos is going to tear it all down, and he'll be in the underworld, and he's got... Persephone, who he cares about, and then Persephone's got to meet her, who she cares about. Mm-hmm. For me, it's just how Persephone's complaining about how bored she is, which makes her come off as just very vapid. Does it? Yes. I get bored and am I vapid? No, but if there's a war going on, and are you complaining about, I'm just so bored. When you're a god and you've seen wars come and go... At some point, they lose their flavor. I don't know. No. You See, don't agree? You, know, you have a good point, except none of the other gods treat it that way. Not a single one of the other That's gods. Because, even Hades because part takes... of her realm's not, because her realm's not uh, under trouble, but Even <laughs> Hades, is he's taking it seriously. That's why they're holed up in the underworld. It's just like, it, I feel like for her patrol, because she's like messing with the flowers and stuff, and she's like turning a flower. And then at first, when Hades is like saying, because that's where Percy sees her, is there when uh, Nico's like, okay, see, I brought you Percy. You're supposed to tell me about my mom. And we see her instantly jealous when Marie is mentioned. Yeah, which we talked about the all of them, really. How this is a Hera trait that has been put onto all of the goddesses. And then at first when Hades is like, oh, we'll go ahead and lock him away forever. Persephone just seems like, oh, really? It seems he's so sweet. It seems like that we shouldn't do that. And Percy, where is my fucking book? <laughs> Queen Persephone studied me curiously. I'd seen her once before in the winter, but now in the summer, she looked like a totally different goddess. She had lustrous brown hair or black hair and warm brown eyes. Her dress shimmered with colors. The fabric changed in bloom. Roses, tulips, honeysuckle. Oh, yeah, we should mention this is not the first time Persephone's shown up. I assume it happened in Sword of Hades. Yeah. Yeah. Which I had not read yet. We've read now. We did the bonus episode about it. I read it. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, the yeah. one. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. 
That's so, so in that one, it's like also a wildly, does, she doesn't just look different. She's a wildly different goddess. I believe it. Because in that one, it's wintertime. She's in the underworld in general. And we've learned that she has had a sword made for Hades to use. A new symbol of power. Secretly. Without anyone else knowing. And then gets, when it gets stolen, she has Percy, Talia, and Nico go and find it for her. Yeah. And Percy's pissed off. At the end, he threatens to throw her in the <laughs> river Lethe. But yeah, she's very different. She's extremely stoic. She's very serious. Mm-hmm. Um, calculating. Calculating. Yeah, she's very like cold and calculating. And Nico makes a comment about how he's like, I'm going to stay in the underworld because clearly my dad needs a better advisor than her. Which, okay, Nico, <laughs> you're 11. A rough. But here... I think Rick forgets the age of sometimes who he's writing. Sometimes I think he does too, yeah. It's like I have them going through all of this. They're they're like thirteen. That's ridiculous. They're twenty three. Mm-hmm. And so actually, it's not even Persephone necessarily complaining that she's bored. It's just Demeter's going on and on and on. And Persephone says "mother" so many times. Like one, she's like, "Oh no, you had you could have married the god of doctors, the god of lawyers, but no, you had to eat the pomegranate, mother, and you get stuck in the underworld, mother, please." Well. And just on and on. In defense of Persephone there, how would you feel if you're sitting next to our mother with your with Kelsey and she's just... Yeah, no, it's not wrong. I was like, oh, it's actually not... <laughs> so, yeah, so then we get the part where he... <laughs> Hades, like, sends Nico to his room. And uh, the boy needs to eat more. He's too skinny. He needs more cereal. We really should have read that in the last episode. <laughs> My bad, gang. <laughs> Persephone rolled her eyes. Mother, enough with the cereal. My lord Hades, are you sure we can't let this little hero go? He's awfully brave. No, my dear, I've spared his life. That's enough. I was sure she was going to stand up for me. The brave, beautiful Persephone was going to get me out of this. Yeah. She, sh- right. she shrugged indifferently. Fine, what's for breakfast? Cereal, Demeter said. Mother! <laughs> the two women disappeared in a Super swirl of flowers weird and weeds. characterizations weeds. of these characters. Just so, it, it, what's, it's what's so strange? Mm-hmm. What's actually weird? And yeah, it's like so. You're right. So she's not complaining. I think she does mention that they're bored in there when they go up to the when they join the fight. Persephone does just straight up turn dudes into flowers, and that's great. Yeah, I will say. Okay, I'm gonna just jump ahead. So the third time we see Persephone is in the sun and the star. Yep, I like that portrayal of her so much more. Yeah, I think it's because she's not as catty. She's not as vapid. Like she's just she's a full character when does the sun into the star take place after trials of apollo well i know after trials of apollo but i mean what time of year oh it must it's the end of summer all the other campers have headed out and she's on so it must so it looks be like fall. she's two different goddesses when she's spring versus spring and summer versus fall and winter i don't hate that if that's an intentional choice which i'm not sure it is uh, here's but the thing you're right we've seen her three different times, once during the spring and twice during the winter. Mm-hmm. And it seems like that might be the case. Yeah. When she is when she is there in the winter, she is queen of the underworld and yeah. has very different priorities than in the summertime where she... In the summertime, she was trying to make everything look beautiful, so she probably is a little more vapid. She's Her like attention's on different things. She's yeah. like the sp- goddess of spring and like vegetation she doesn't need to be doing like whatever's going on because what's weird is when percy's like oh he thought that persephone was going to get him out of this that's in line with what she does in mythology how many times has hades been like fuck this demigod off with their head it's like dearie can't we just pinky toe i guess yeah (laughs) can't we like literally take a foot at least god damn like orpheus and sisyphus and just how many times has persephone been the one to be like but yeah it's it's I almost feel like she should have convinced Hades because Hades is like I'm not gonna kill him I'll just lock him away and she's like well can't we just let him go no I already spared his life okay whatever I almost feel like she should have gotten Hades not to kill him and looked at Percy and been like I've done what I can <laughs> he'll do the rest yeah like rather than him being like, oh she'll get me out of this okay whatever I don't care yeah uh, who cares okay I guess it's yeah it's weird but yeah maybe I mean if that's an intentional choice i do really like it the mm. fact that they when she is like queen of the underworld she is a different because she kind carries of, herself a little differently yeah she has different priorities and so like that conversation she has we won't get into too much of it in the sun and the star 
because that'll just just derail the whole episode. Uh, <laughs> but it's very good. And I just love the conversation she has with Will. I think it's very interesting and complex. And it's also Rick Riordan trying to juggle the the difficulty of it's not good that Hades kidnapped her and forced her to. And she had a pomegranate and has to stay here even though she doesn't want to. But also, can't she also be a goddess who likes ruling the underworld? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. The answer is yes. She's totally allowed to be a Sorry, goddess. Sorry, I, like, I was trying oh, to no, close an ad. And then it came up with the side thing where it's like, oh, why do you want to close this ad? It's like, it's covering content. And then it's like, ad closed by Google. And it's this big white box that's bigger than the ad that I closed. <laughs> and I'm like, sorry, that's nothing that's to do with wild. this. wild. No, you're I'm like, good. what the fuck, Google? <laughs> that's so wild. So tell me about her in mythology. Oh, my God. I would love to tell you about her in mythology. Sorry. I zoned out for a second thinking of her in those... Um, Desperate La Storia, the uh-huh. anime Spanish language music videos. And it's just great. It's 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 so great because we haven't gotten a one of Persephone. But we've seen her. But we've seen her because we've gotten a Hades one and a Demeter one. Mm-hmm. And the way she is seen in those are very different. Well, of course it's like are. the way Demeter sees her and the way Hades sees her. It's like when she's down in the underworld, Demeter's looking for her. But when we've smashed to her, she's like wearing a skull necklace now and is like cackling <laughs> over the fires of the underworld. And it's just. Is that in Demeter's? No, that's in. That's um, in Hades. That's in Hades one. He's <laughs> like, Demeter's. this is my wife, bro. Like, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. It's because in that one, he when she's leaving, he hands her the uh, pomegranates and she takes them and eats them willingly as she goes back. Mm-hmm. And in the Demeter one, it's like, she's like, oh, I ate him by accident. And then she's Uh-oh. like, oh. So. I got to the pop culture too soon. That's just what I was zoning out about for a second. Where I was oh, like, that's, that's so fun. funny. All right. Oh, my God. Here's uh, the theme of this episode is to hell with every writer who's ever referred to Persephone as a minor goddess. <laughs> yeah. She's the queen of the underworld. She's that's ridiculous. Queen? Hera's not a minor goddess. Exactly. Why? Amphitrite, arguably. <laughs> Amphitrite is literally the personification of the Mediterranean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but like again, arguably because you don't hear about her much. That's but you don't hear about Hestia much. That's true. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. So let's go. Oh, also one time Percy Jackson uh, Persephone did turn Nico into a dandelion. We've never gotten more details than that. Yeah, but she did turn him into a dandelion yeah. one time. So he got better, but also <laughs> he got better, but but. You know. So we got to start with the taking of Persephone. Yeah. Because we... It's, the, it's, it's her story. The, it's the... it's Yeah, it is the first thing folks think about. So this is actually not mentioned by Homer, mm. but it is mentioned briefly by Hesiod in the Theogony, and then this whole thing is expanded on in the Homoic, Homeric hymn to Demeter, which is a friendly reminder. I'm sure our listeners know. I'm sure you know, DJ. Homeric hymns weren't necessarily written by Homer. Yeah, it's, and also Homer didn't necessarily write any of these things either. This is just a whole genre, I would yeah, say. Yeah, of writing. Yeah, I'm real quick. Just going to read a few lines of the beginning, as translated by uh, Emily Garber, classic scholar ish from Monster Donuts, and future guest of the pod. Nice. I will begin and sing of rich-haired Demeter, woeful goddess. Hades, permitted by all-seeing thundering Zeus, stole her daughter, while Demeter, lady of fruits and swords all golden, played with her and the daughters of Oceanus in a meadow. So, big deal. Important reminder. Zeus said this was okay. Yes. Doesn't make it okay. But, detail. And so you know, you know, DJ, you listeners know, Hades takes Persephone into the underworld. Yep. Demeter searches all over for her. Eventually, Hecate comes and says, I don't know what happened, but I heard her screaming, so let's go to Helios. They go to Helios. Helios says, I saw the like the world open up and Hades drag her under. Demeter, enraged, stops letting anything grow. Eventually, Zeus is forced to get involved, sends Hermes to go get Persephone from the underworld. Like a vast majority of retellings more, so. Yeah. Skipping to... The next most important part of the myth in terms of Persephone. Yep. I'm going to read from, okay, this is uh, Emily's translation. And the son of Cronos said, this is after Hermes is rolled up and like, okay, you, you got to give her back. And the son of Cronos said, go to your mother in her dark veil. I will not hold you here nor cast on you a shameful husband's shade as my brother Zeus does. But if you stay at my side, you will rule over everyone who lives and walks, most esteemed of all immortals. And for all days, every sacrifice should be for you an appeasing gift. 
To write this wrong, I have done. To write this wrong, I have done. Persephone, my sweet. For Persephone, overjoyed, did not notice the sweet, the seeds so sweet slipped to her by another under a darkness veil, that made her husband's freedom a poison gift. For as soon as she ate, she was bound to shadow and say, she was bound to shadow and shade, never again to spend all her days among the immortals and the sweet smelling fields of her goddess mother's rule. Rough. Rough. So that's that's the thing. She eats some pomegranate seeds, mm-hmm. and it's so. They're just, they're so small. They're teeny. They're teeny. The the pomegranate is not the thing that's important. It's the fact that the seeds are teeny tiny and how they have such a huge impact. It's the symbolism of it. Yeah. The idea that you were, and then this is something that Demeter was told earlier, that she can come home as long as she hasn't eaten food of the underworld. And it's interesting, the idea of like a taboo. As long as Persephone has not broken any taboos, she can come home and it'll be fine. But Hades tricked her. Yeah. Is essentially what what we are we're getting from the way it's worded. Yeah, she didn't know about this taboo. Uh, some other like translations will imply that she ate without thinking about it. It was like absent mindedly. Oh, I would. But, I, it would, it would be me her. straight up just be like chilling in the underworld, be like, just fucking. Oh, hey, is that like a bowl of pomegranate seeds? Sick, and just like <laughs> eat it. Like <laughs> just sitting there forlorn and just. Just on my phone, Fuck. <laughs> doom scrolling fucking Twitter and just like just munching on fucking. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> DJ, you can come home now. Us. Oh, sweet. And then I just. Did you I, eat anything? I, I get there and it's it's like Vanellope Von Sweets with the fucking game. Glitching, first... you can't get out. <laughs> can't, can't get out. I was like, no, no. <laughs> just an invisible wall preventing like, me from leaving. Surely we can work this out. Persephone got the only a couple months of deal. It's like, yeah, Persephone <laughs> ate three yeah, seeds. Yeah, this he dude ate six, six pomegranates, dude. <laughs> six. Do you know how hard it is to peel a pomegranate? <laughs> no, I, I saw a video. It's actually super easy. If oh, you really? Do it right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do it right. All right, bonus content. DJ's going to teach us how to peel a pomegranate. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, that's the, that's the story. Y'all know, we don't have to get into super detailed about it, but that's mm. the idea. I, I did uh, learn that in earliest versions of the myth, it's it was actually probably Hecate that rescued Persephone mm-hmm. because there is an uh, attic red-figured bell crater circa 440 BC. You can see it in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, but it shows Perse- Persephone like rising up upstairs like from the earth and Hermes is there but he's standing to the side and it's Hecate who's holding her two torches uh-huh. and looks back at Persephone and she's leading her to where like Demeter she should know her. not to do that but I'm surprised it worked out in the well end. it's fine it's different <laughs> Zeus got involved, involved this time <laughs> that's a good point I, I it would have to be a whole different episode to really dig into the Demeter Persephone Hecate of that like mother maiden crone uh-huh. aspect of of these three figures but that that just can't this is persephone's episode i gotta i gotta focus so this is not just like oh the important like oh this is the first thing you think about when you think of persephone and that's not a bad thing because this story was incredibly important to ancient greek mystery cults <laughs> <laughs> mystery cults that's what they were called the mystery cults I don't, what are the mystery cults, Darren? Oh, DJ, like, yeah. that's Bo- another episode of- Bonus like, episode, Darren teaches me about the mystery cult. Okay. <laughs> You've just completely, we kicked out both of our Halloween-themed bonus episodes for the month, and now we're doing education pieces. What are you talking about? The peeling a proper pomegranate could just be like a video. <laughs> a like, video. We know we don't do enough videos on, on no, Patreon, don't. so. Like, specifically, like, do you remember that I mentioned last episode when we discussed Demeter- that there was uh what are the where in my notes did it go okay so they are so persephone and demeter are central figures in the uh Alicinian mysteries which is like an ancient ancient religious cult practices that predate the greek dark ages mm-hmm. and i can't even, in the deep the greek dark ages are like i can't okay so <laughs> old, old 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 practices and Specifically, the the focus was on like the ascent of Persephone and her being reunited with Demeter. Yeah, and there's a, we we have records of these practices, but it's it's also hard to know what the gist was because they weren't written down. They were really secretive. Only certain people were allowed to know. Yeah, and they became more public as things went on. Like by like Hellenistic period, it seemed to be a more widely like public celebration, not quite so like secretive. Yeah, but. The the 
the fact that the focus was on Persephone returning from the underworld has led some scholars to theorize that it was likely like, that the theme of this mystery was a form of immortality, mm-hmm. suggesting that those who practice these, like, get through the steps and follow the rules and do all the things, mayhaps were attempting to achieve some form of Im- immortality outside of the realm of Hades, like entering an afterlife not controlled by Hades. Because as you recall, early Greek underworld was a big bummer. Yeah. Don't want to hang out there. Just a land of mm-hmm. inconveniences. Yeah. So Persephone returning, demonstrating being able to leave Hades' underworld and return to her mother and the living suggests that this opportunity for an immortality in the afterlife mm-hmm. may have been part of the appeal or part and why this was so long and widely celebrated. So I mentioned that because it, I I really wanted to underline how the taking of Persephone is such an ins- essential concept mm-hmm. and how it feels like later storytellers only saw that separated from the cultural practices around it. Yeah. And that is what has led to Persephone being viewed as minor. <laughs> Rough. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, well, she was core the maiden. She was kidnapped by Hades and been queen of the underworld, and that's it. How tragic for her, how sad, but that's all there is to her. And so com- when you see, so I think that's also an important thing that we, we talk about, like these stories and retelling and reinterpreting them and how that's like interesting and and important to storytelling traditions. But also there is an importance in studying these myths within the what we could call the original cultural context. Mm-hmm. Because I think that lends a lot of understanding to exactly what the importance of the story is. Because it also underlines that Persephone was incredibly damn important yeah. as a goddess. Of course she was. She was queen of the underworld. She was queen of the underworld. Uh, did, did you want to know a fun fact I learned? Yeah. What's up? So, as we also talked about, the taking of Persephone is an ideological myth. Okay. Ideological is, it means given a reason for. It's literally a myth that exists to explain oh, yeah, why yeah, yeah. something is. DJ, can you guess what this is a myth for? What? I mean... The seasons. Absolutely. Specifically. Winter and spring? You would think. (laughs) Well, yes. Specifically, it's most often associated with why we have winter. Because Persephone goes away. Demeter doesn't let anything grow. That makes sense. But maybe Persephone didn't go to the underworld in winter. Or maybe. Because also what's weird is if it was like fall and winter. Fall is when we harvest things. That's why we have harvest festivals. That's what Halloween is. It's a harvest festival in the fall. This is where we are able to gather the crops and prepare. So Persephone, the vegetation goddess, would be a little weird if she wasn't around for the harvest. So then she would go in the winter. Mm -hmm. But there's also theories that maybe it's not the winter and that maybe it was actually the summer, a.k.a. when the Mediterranean drought season. Oh, German scholar Walter Burkett, who he wrote this book, but the English translation is Greek Religion, which is still considered to be one of the best academic sources we have mm. in studying Greek religion. Because this dude really went hard and learned a lot about it. He's not our friend uh, Robert Graves over there just spouting off yeah. <laughs> whatever. Like this dude is a little bit more like boots he, on the ground type. Boots of on the yeah, as, as much as you could be with this kind of topic, <laughs> but. Uh, he put forth the the theory that it, that it was most likely maybe Persephone actually was the one. It was ex- not explaining winter. It was maybe explaining drought when yeah, nothing grows and that why that was. Yeah. And still being part of like the natural cycle of the seasons. Drought is a natural part. But I am while I do love headcanon uh, Demeter as ice grandma. Mm-hmm. I love the the frost in the winter and I would love us to have Demeter kids who can do ice powers. Desert grandma kind of cool though. Desert grandma really tough though. Like I'm into that. <laughs> <laughs> so can I tell you 
more reasons. Absolutely not. Oh, okay. Well, all right. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you guys so much for listening. All right. Take care, everybody. Don't be like this. Okay, no. I went through. I compiled so many reasons why it's total nonsense that Persephone is just like, whatever. Our girl came with so many epitaphs. Mm -hmm. Perhaps because it was considered not- Taboo to talk about her? No, not even like in the same way like, oh, don't talk about Hades because it's bad luck. It was like forbidden to speak her name, which suggests that it may actually may have been conflated with a much older thonic goddess who was just called Despania, which means the mistress, Mm -hmm. because this goddess's name would only be revealed to those who purchased her secret mystery cults. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of that with Persephone, where it seems like her worship and this figure of Persephone and core likely was a lot older, Mycenaean, Minoan, in Proto-Indo-European, like yeah. a lot older traditions. There are Sumerian goddess who was kidnapped by a dragon and then forced to become ruler of their underworld. Kidnapping is very popular. <laughs> very popular in old, old, old... Uh... Yeah, but kidnapping and being becoming goddess of an underworld. Very specific. Yeah, very specific. Very so. specific theme. But well, I don't know. I haven't looked into everything. Everybody's we can underworld. Through. There's also similarities with... Eh, I won't get into Persephone and Osiris. This isn't the time. <laughs> but just... I, I can't... I am not equipped to adequately really dig into the fine minutia of where Persephone as a figure evolved from and all the different connections. Like most commonly in the one that we're going to stick through just for simplicity's sake, daughter of Zeus and Demeter. Yeah. That's why when Zeus says, Hades, yeah, you can take her. It's the father giving the permission. But other variations, I think in the Orphic tradition, I can't remember if that's correct, but I know other variations had her as the daughter of Zeus and Rhea. And then Persephone would become the mother of Dionysus via Zeus. Interesting. Yeah. So there's a lot of play there. Play there. At one point in time, Zeus turned into a snake. There's a lot. There's just a lot. And I can't I can't go into it all, gang. That would not be fun to listen to just me list all the sometimes it was this and sometimes it was yeah, this. Yeah. We're trying to construct a theme. Here's a lot of the variations of this one story that mm-hmm. was told by seventy different authors. Mm-hmm. And each one came with a different thing. Uh a minor different change. Yeah. Or like different perception. Like when you have her as the daughter of Rhea, she is connected in that line of major earth goddesses. She still holds that when she is paired with Demeter. Mm-hmm. It gets complicated. Mm. I want to acknowledge that. But some of her epitaphs. And that's that's kind of the thing. Because a lot of her epitaphs, especially when they're the ones that were used for her, like, as goddess of the underworld, mm-hmm. they were maybe likely names of other underworld goddesses that Persephone eventually just, like, Enveloped. glommed. Yeah. And they just became Persephone. Mm-hmm. Because she was queen of the underworld. I don't like any of them. Never mind. <laughs> they all suck. Mm-hmm. But you could almost say that. I mean, I don't not not like not. It's not like I don't like them. They're all interesting. But none of them are like, I can't. I could just list this list and it's not yeah. enough to whatever. But I would say you also know like sometimes she's called core, which, you know, means the maiden. Yep. We could almost actually call this an epitaph for Persephone when she is in her personification of the vegetation goddess, the goddess of spring, rather than that just necessarily being pre-kidnapping. Yeah. And the reason, and I can already, some listeners are being like, no, that's not right, because Persephone means the destroyer, bringer of death, and that's when she only gets to be Persephone when she becomes queen of the underworld. But that actually probably isn't true. Mm-hmm. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. Just like I told, uh, just like I had to be the one to say that Cerberus isn't Spot. Persephone probably doesn't mean bringer of death. Oh, uh, you hate to see it. Destroy- I know. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The etymology of Persephone is super complicated. Um, complicated in the sense that everybody wants to get a piece of a guess. Uh huh. But mostly, for just it's just old and obscure. It's like how we talk about Demeter, and we're pretty like Demeter, like meter. 
mother. We know that for a fact. But the da, di, de, that one was a, is a lot harder for everyone to agree on mm-hmm. what it's supposed to mean. Persephone, just the whole word is that way <laughs> where they just don't know. Like ancient authors were even like, oh, Persephone means like like all these things, like very creative. Plato said that her name means she that touches, she who touches things that are in motion. That's a weird name. Yeah. Um, he actually uses this in one of his dialogues wherein it's like a something that Socrates was having, quote, 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 conversation, wherein it actually is used to uh, reference Persephone's wisdom. Mm-hmm. Being so wise to touch things that are in motion implies an understanding of the cosmos, which is constantly in motion. I guess. Yeah. That actually leans into Persephone just being viewed as being very wise. In fact, it's mentioned in that. Well, let me get the actual because I have it here. It is Plato's Cratylus, in which this comes up, and they just and he like dis, and Socrates is discussing the meaning of Persephone's name and how it means you know she who touches what is in motion, mm-hmm. and like as a thing of like her wisdom, uh, like here in in some or some name like it because she touches that which is because she touches that which is here in showing her wisdom and Hades who is wise consorts with her because she is wise. So also demonstrating, like, I don't know. Yeah, I, I can't tell you what was going on there. But it does indicate that Persephone is viewed as being wise. So yeah. much so that it's not unreasonable for Hades to go to her yeah. for her wisdom. And it's also just actually the fact that he turns to her for wisdom indicates that Hades is also wise for doing so because he recognizes wisdom. Yeah. Which makes Nico saying, obviously, my dad needs a better <laughs> advisor. Some nonsense. Well, in this one, Persephone's not the one who touches everything. She's the bringer of death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So other ancient etymologies kind of associated her name with this phrase, therian fon 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 phoneon, which is like to bring or cause death and then breaking down elements of like wealth or death or light. But the general consensus is this is like a quote folk etymology meaning this is just what people claimed based on like, oh, this kind of sounds like this, so they are related and therefore that is it. Mm-hmm. Wherein that's actually not the translation of her name specifically. So I'm so sorry, everyone. Persephone does probably really likely does not mean bringer of death. But, but for all we know, it does. But okay. Uh, nowadays... <laughs> Uh, her name is thought to have those Indo-European origins, you know, yeah. old, old, old. Rudolf Watcher, who's a who's a Swiss historical linguist and a classic scholar, he wrote a piece called Persephone, the Threshing Maiden, <laughs> and he's one of the recent who like contemporary scholars who, in examining her name through that like Indo-European etymology, uh-huh. it seems to have roots in phrases that mean like sheath of corn and to strike or hit. And so her name would mean something like female corn thresher. Okay. Which is how you would describe reaping corn in the harvest. Nice. Yeah. So when you have this, it makes it far less likely that she was Kor and then Persephone. And more likely that Kor is an epitaph for Persephone when she is goddess of vegetation. Yeah. Makes and that sense. she is always... Persephone and that there are some other ones that was like oh Persephone and Kor were two separate goddesses that were conflated later which is something I said actually during our Lore Olympus uh, episode of Remith episode recently but that's, it's not as fun that's I don't know wait not as, fun. not as fun not, not as, as fun not as fun if they're not the same it's not as fun as if they're not the same hold on so wait 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 it's not as fun if they're two different goddesses yes I agree yeah <laughs> I think it's Interesting if they were two different goddesses who were woven together, because I think that says a lot about... Core. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, like, cultural traditions and storytelling and then the evolution of the perception of these yeah, stories. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I think I do like it more if this is just one central figure who has always been both. Yeah. And you have this story that came about to explain how she was both. How could she both be queen of the underworld and 
daughter of Demeter, but in the fact that she has always been both because she ties to her coming back ascending is where that immortality thing comes from. So rather than this story maybe being something to piecemeal together, it was like to pull together three different desperate things. It was really just explaining one concept. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I could be totally off. I I have the most cursory knowledge of what I can find in books and just different sources that seem legit. A lot of the times, and it seems to me that in Greek mythology, things are born to be a certain thing. Mm -hmm. Persephone was born to be queen of the underworld. Yeah. Because, I mean, as we know, the fates are just straight up like, yeah, there's here are the major plot points of what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. We're not going to tell you any of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that, yeah. In speaking, like, mythologically, she's always this, actually. And I think that's very interesting. Yes. And I think it also comes in conflict with modern interpretation of it, especially trying to deal with the fact that she was kidnapped and brought to the underworld. And the concept of that being faded kind of sucks, but it's complicated. Yeah. And also, when we view it this way, like what I talked about in the Demeter one, how I liked the interpretation of the story of Demeter using her power to like push against Zeus and Hades, who completely cut her out of the decision to marry off her daughter. Yeah. But what she does in the fact is breaks the natural order of things by creating either winter or this drought season where things don't go and people are threatened actually implies that maybe what she did was incorrect because men are allowed to behave this way and Demeter was wrong for pushing against it. But then we double back into, but if this very old and important like festival and these mysteries were about Persephone's ascent and this concept of immortality and the potential that it like offered to worshipers then we swing back around to like no what demeter and persephone did was good actually and important Mm -hmm. and there's just layers and it's complicated we can't go back and ask anybody who actually was doing these things like hey man why figure it out there's a i I want to ask these people we're trying all of that to say i feel like people are gonna be mad that i say persephone doesn't mean the bringer of death no i think it'll be fine yeah i mean the etymology doesn't really line up. It doesn't yeah, the line etym- up. Yeah, right? it's a, it's a folk etymology. It's yeah. it's an ancient folk etymology. I will say that this this uh, the idea of her me- the name meaning bringer of death is old. It's not something people made up in like two thousand two or something like that. Yeah, yeah, right. But it's just because it's old doesn't mean it's accurate. It's people. It's people. Like I said, pre Greek Dark Ages having these words and trying to figure out the meaning of these words that were hundreds and hundreds of years before they were going yeah. around using what limited information they had. So yeah. this is not me coming for like Laura Olympus or anything that has bringer no. of death. Here's, being here's the thing that when you say it's like a folk meaning, I'm like, so these people just eventually came together and were like, yeah, it means bringer death much like people have just been making up slang nowadays. Kind of, yeah. They, yeah. they, they I, I guess that makes a lot of sense, too, wherein they just decided Persephone means bringer of death, wherein maybe in the earliest, earliest title, she could have been Corn Thresher, but they have lost been that fucking meaning. anything, right? So bring, but with, when they look at who she is. I mean, the meaning of names mean nothing. Mine means son of David. Like, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm a biblical name. <laughs> Yeah, I think mine is uh, etymologically related to a Persian word meaning treasure. There you go. But who knows? It's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a cult Main, mystery. Names mean fuck all, okay? So. Choose the meaning of your name. So, yeah, I would say that it's kind of like how uh, Morpheus is the Greek god of sleep, even though, actually, no, he's not. Nope. Persephone it mythologically means... Actually, yeah, Persephone, Persephone means mythologically bringer of death, but etymologically, it probably doesn't. Yeah. And both of those can be true concepts as we yes. play in this messy, wild, colorful space. Absolutely. Because let me tell you all the reasons why they were like, this name definitely means bringer of death, because we're not <laughs> done yet. So Persephone is mentioned in the Iliad. Okay. One title that they, so like I said, like, oh, it was like, traditionally you were forbidden to say Persephone. Yeah. But that doesn't mean they didn't. So here we have early in the Iliad. Oh my God, it's the Iliad. So Achilles is not fighting because he's still pissed off because uh, Agamemnon is the worst. Yeah. 
but also. So finally, Agamemnon's ready to make peace. So he sends some embassies to go talk to Achilles. Odysseus is there as well as uh, the, how did they describe him? The old horse driver Phoenix is also there. (laughs) And they're going back and forth and they're trying to convince Achilles to come play ball again. Uh Uh-huh. And finally, Phoenix is like, here's my sob story. And the sob story involves a wild ass incident that ended with his father, Phoenix's father, cursing him and saying he called upon the horrifying furies and swore that he would not let a son of mine sit on his lap. The gods fulfilled his threats, infernal Zeus and dread Persephone. (laughs) I think infernal Zeus is usually a term used to mean Hades. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's literally, and I think it's interesting that it's also dread Persephone. Like, it's not just Hades who filled this or Zeus himself who filled it. It's Persephone was yeah. this equally. Let's swing by the uh, Odyssey, the Iliad sequel, the Odyssey, wherein we see a similar thing when Circe tells Odysseus that he's going to have to go to the underworld and get some directions. You need not remain here in my house against your will, but first you must complete another journey. Go to the house of Hades and the dreadful Persephone and ask the Thebian prophet, the blind Teresis, for his advice. Persephone has given him alone full understanding, even now in death. The other spirits flit about as shadows. So again, we have... Per- Isn't like- that the guy uh, swinging the weed whacker and son of Neptune? Maybe. Is he blind? <laughs> He's blind and like can see like the future. Probably then, yeah. I have not read Son of Neptune in ages. But yeah, that sounds about right. Say his name again? Tyre SES? I think so, yeah. Yeah, probably. So again, we have like dread or dreadful Persephone was just Mm. a really common way they referred to her because she was not to be trifled with. And so Odysseus. Well, her name does mean bringer of death. I don't know if you know this, Darren. <laughs> I don't. You know, I've heard that. I've heard that too, DJ. I've heard this. Folks have told me this. Um. So Odysseus does this. Mm-hmm. He goes to the place. He does some blood animal sacrifices, and a bunch of shades start showing up, including that of his mom. This is a real bummer. <laughs> this is how Odysseus finds out his mom has died of grief because he never returned from war. Like it's... Imagine stumbling across just like, or just getting a fucking like, hey man, yeah, I'm your father and I'm dead. Yeah, kind of. It's a real bummer. And he's so upset, obviously, sees his mom dead. And he tries to embrace her, but he can't. Yeah, she's a shade. She, exactly. Uh, he's like crying. Let us... Let us wrap loving arms around each other and find a frigid comfort in our shared tears. But is it really you or has the queen sent me a phantom to increase my grief? (laughs) She answered, oh, my child, you are the most unlucky man alive. Persephone is not deceiving you. This is the rule for mortals when we die. Being like, I'm a ghost. I'd be like that, bro. But I, I love the whole like, but is it really you, mom? Or is the queen of the underworld fucking with me? No, she's not. She's known to. She's known to. Because up next. Okay, uh, by the way, the uh, translations of the Iliad and the Odyssey that I am referring to today, both translated by Emily Wilson. Yes. Right after this interaction with his mother, when she fades, as we were talking, some women came, sent by Persephone, the daughters and the wives of warriors. And it's like, like, okay, here's where it starts. Mm -hmm. And it's just paragraphs or verses and verses of all of these like women and daughters of like heroes and gods Hmm. just and all sent by persephone and i i needed more time to figure out what this (laughs) was about what this meant because it's funny because i was like oh let me check spark notes let me check summaries that like analyze this yeah who someone is and they would say like oh and then he saw a bunch of heroes and i'm like no that's not what happened that's not what happened why did this happen thing i could think is to fill him with grief and guilt and regret possibly because mm. these are the daughters and wives of heroes that were joined by him or heroes he slain himself that would make a lot of sense but some of the women he sees are like megra hercules's wife simile no ariadne or maybe to make him feel bad about his own wife yeah, it could be that, too. It's like seeing the fates of all of these women. Yeah, all these women who were lovers of great heroes who 
mm-hmm. Odysseus is supposed to be himself and his wife might meet the same fate. That's true. Cause yeah, cause he has like, oh, cause his mother tells him like, no, she is still loyal to you. Like your, your wife, but it is wild. But yes, I, I like that. Cause it is, it, and it's noted that like, oh, they, cause a lot of spirits are appearing as soon as he like did the blood, they came to try to drink yeah. some of it. But the fact that these are the ones that are noted to have been sent by Persephone. And yeah. I think that indicates an interesting, like, twofold. Like, one, if Persephone is sending these women. Alcamene, she's the mother of uh, Hercules. I, I actually said Simile earlier, but that was a mistake. Mm-hmm. Simile is Dionysus' mom. <laughs> Though sometimes Persephone is Dionysus' mom. Sometimes she's Zagreus' mom, who's yeah. killed by Hera, and then comes back as uh, Dionysus you know, by who's, Simile. Who, who's to say? Who's I don't to know. say? Who's to say? But I like... Yeah, like the fact that he had mentioned like, oh, did Persephone send you my mother to, to torment me? It's like, no, it's really me, son. And Persephone is like, yeah, but I'll send someone else. I'll send, I'll send all somebody of somebody else's mother. <laughs> yeah, I'll send somebody else's mother. <laughs> and wives, wives of heroes. Oedipus's mother shows up. <laughs> it's like, yeah, dude, I fucked my son. It was weird. It was so bad. I don't oh appreciate my God. it. It was yeah, rough. It's, yeah, he it's... gouged his eyes out when he found out. I mean, yeah. look, I know it was a weird situation, but am I that bad? <laughs> rude she threw herself off a tower i'm pretty yeah sure. yeah. Um, yeah and but it's even more like uh, odysseus names a lot and then he says i cannot name each famous wife and daughter i saw here holy knights would pass away before i finished because he's telling this story well yeah. in this part he's telling the story to uh you someone. know someone a king a queen in their hall after all of his wild ass adventures tales. tales yeah so i think that's just those like in these like early texts we have and it's like not we don't get like in depth per se. It's not an awful lot. But the fact that she is just like name dropped indicates that the audience would have been intimately aware of what they were supposed to understand. Yeah. Like it's not just the house of Hades, it's the house of Hades and dreadful Persephone. It's not just the infernal Zeus who will cast the furies onto this man for the curse. It is also the infernal Zeus and the dread Persephone. Yeah. Like she in her own rights, was ruler of the underworld, caster of curses, controller of spirits. Like, she was terrifying and not to be messed around with. But at the same time, the myths also indicate that she wasn't cruel. We don't have stories of her wantingly fucking with humans. Yeah. Okay, one time she kills Menthe, but like... I don't know. The, uh... (laughs) Seems like she was fucking with Odysseus. Right, but he's in the underworld. You know who's not supposed to be in the underworld? Odysseus. He was told by Calypso. He, or was it Calypso? It Cersei. Was Cersei. Cersei. He was told by Cersei. Cersei what what could... are you gonna say? No. Listen, listen. <laughs> he already got the directions he needed from the pro- from the, the blind prophet. Now he's just hanging around. Well, he's trying to get out, it seems yeah. like. <laughs> it's per- no, he's just there and the other ghosts are showing up, and now Persephone sent this whole <laughs> menagerie of women then it, to f- just... then it's one of those situations where he turns around to head out and then shit just happens to him probably <laughs> as always does a uh, cups of obviously there's a couple myths in which persephone like i said earlier how i was annoyed with the fact that percy's like oh she'll help me and she's like never mind it's like but her whole thing is like helping them like yeah. odysseus no odysseus <laughs> not odysseus not odysseus Orpheus, where she's the one that convinces Hades to let Orpheus try uh-huh. to get Ariadne. Not Ariadne. Too many names. Eurydice. Eurydice. Um, we also have Sisyphus, who goes to Persephone and is like, please let me leave my wife. Ah, she's not able to do the burial rites She learned for her me. lesson from, uh, from That's Sisyphus. That's true. She's like, no, <laughs> like, I don't help heroes, heroes anymore. Dude. That would actually be way more fuck interesting if she's, if, <laughs> if, like, personally, she was like, last time I helped a hero, it didn't go well for me or my husband. Yeah. It didn't go well for Thanatos, so sorry, Percy. And I would have actually liked her more for that as a character. Like, I would have liked that choice. I think that would have been a bold choice for him to be like, sorry, I don't help heroes anymore after the Sisyphus incident. Let me ask you something. Do you like the Persephone portrayal in Go the Distance? Yes, because she's a little crazy, and I love a little crazy. Yeah, but she does the same thing. She just seems apathetic (laughs) here. Because the reason she... Okay, Go the Distance. (laughs) Listeners, you know, we released this as a bonus episode. We did. And it's been on the main feed, but in case you haven't listened to it yet. This is the uh, Twisted Tale, the Disney ones, Mm -hmm. uh, wherein... 
Megara has goes, to go through trials in order to become a god so that she can stay with her. Because Zeus said no to Hercules saying, no, I don't want to be a god. Like, so, you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> that's not, that wasn't an That's option. not how this shit works, dude. So Megara at one point goes to the end of the world, actually makes friends with Persephone and shows her how to like. Prior to realizing it's Persephone, mm-hmm. who like she also knows is missing because Demeter's been upset, yeah. upset about it, which she's been, I think she's been seeing it in her dreams. Interesting. Yeah. Well, she's been seeing, uh, or no, I think we got like a brief thing on it at the very start where Demeter was crying to Aphrodite that her daughter's missing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she makes friends with him and it's like, yeah, if you plant him, probably somewhere else they'll grow a little better. And Persephone's like, oh, thank you for the advice. Yeah. And smash cut to later when she's confronting Hades and Persephone comes waltzing in and they're like, that's my friend. You can't just kill her. She's my friend. Yeah. But if, if I don't kill her, she'll tell your mother. I'm sorry, Meg. <laughs> yeah, because that makes sense. She's like, oh, sorry, Meg. If I let, if we let you go, you'll tell my mother. And Meg is like, no, 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 wait, wait. You just need wait. You- I can do something I- here. And she calls Hera. Yeah, she's like, I actually have. I'm in good with the goddess of marriage. I, I in fact and Queen have of the this rose that has one petal left that can summon anyone I want. So I'm just gonna, hey, Hera, do you want to marry these two real quick? <laughs> Yeah, it's like that's wild absolutely <laughs> absolutely i do so i so i don't mind that because it's like in last olympian persephone doesn't help percy out of like i don't just feel it i just don't want to put in the energy yeah. it's it's not like if hades had said if we let him go he could destroy olympus yeah then she'd be like yeah okay like i and i because I, I feel like because that comes from any sort of motive Mm -hmm. it feels like persephone in last olympian just doesn't have any that's fair she just just has apathy and annoyance whereas well she's in the underworld a little early she's not super stoked about that Yeah, there's a war going on it's really inconvenient (laughs) which would also be funny if she was just annoyed that she's like um i had plans for the fucking job to do i had a job you interrupted me in the middle of my job and if she was like mad at hades he's like you have to like i understand that but i need you to understand that i just a better character than what was written just more just let her be more rather than exasperated by her mother and her mother just being, oh, cereal. <laughs> Rick, <laughs> you keep doing cereal. this to the goddesses so and I'm going to need you. Which is, listen, Sun of the Star is very good. Yep. Mark Shira was also a part of that. Yep. So, but yeah, Go the Distance is great. I love the fact that Persephone's there. I love that. She- I also love a little crazy. I love a yeah. little, just, yeah, to run the underworld. Just a little screw be- loose. Yeah, to run the underworld, you, it's hard. Because there's also this thing about Persephone where in, oh, Dionysus. Yeah. So you recall how in our Hades episode I mentioned, you know, in the list of people who fucked around and found out in the underworld, Dionysus. that Dionysus just weirdly isn't mentioned on those lists of people who came to the underworld and then, like, Hades interacted with or punished? Apparently it's because Persephone dealt with this. Ah. So I'm... I, so this is why he got to get away with what he did. <laughs> yeah. I, I was doing a lot of digging. I'm, I'm... Okay. It was a little hard to source it, but there is a lot of vases from Athens that depicts Dionysus in the company of persephone yeah persephone and demeter and then on a neck amphora from athens dionysus is depicted on a chariot with his mother next to a myrtle holding persephone who stands next to demeter nice these pieces suggest that the tale is when dionysus went to the underworld to get semele he offers a myrtle plant to persephone in exchange to be allowed to bring semele with him to olympus Mm -hmm. Nice. And I love that. That's great. I like that Persephone got it because it's also oh, it's also like so thematic, like Persephone, the goddess who is separated from her mother, helping Dionysus, the god who never got to know his mother, be reunited with her. Mm-hmm. Very sweet. We love a theme. So that I want to, yeah, I want to mention Dionysus, but also it's it's interesting because Dionysus. He descends in the underworld and rescues his mother Semele, and so he's and with being the god of grapes and and wine, like. Grapes also die and come back. Yeah. So there is that that cycle that of like life and death that's associated with Dionysus, especially if you dig into the Orphic traditions that connect him with like a pre Dionysus, like Figure. this Zagir, Zagreus who was killed and came back. Mm-hmm. You have this like life and death cycle in him as well, but he doesn't come with the acute sadness. Yeah. That Persephone is often endued with. This is something I remember 
reading about when we did our Dionysus episode forever and ever ago. Yeah. About how Persephone, there is something about this vegetation goddess who is also goddess of the underworld and having the being part of the natural cycle of life and death that they just associated her more with something tragic, but also something to be feared maybe because she is so inherently always a part of the underworld. Even Mm -hmm. when she is goddess of spring, even when she is topside, that is still who she is. She is still Persephone. Yeah. Even with the epitaph of core. Whereas Dionysus, he made the descent successfully and came back, but he's not bound to it. That was just a thing. And he is more lenient to just like always look in the moments of life in the moments rather than the constant cycle and the inevitability. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's one time where there was a plague hit Anoia and the people asked the Oracle of Delphi, what do we need to do? The they- Oracle did some crack and said... Well, you got to appease the king and queen of the underworld by means of sacrifice. And if you guys don't know, it is historical that the Oracle of <laughs> just did crack. Okay, maybe not crack, but some sort of... Some sort of... Some sort of... Psychedelic, probably. Yeah. <laughs> there was something going on there. Uh, so two maidens, Menape and Metacor, who were apparently daughters of Orion... Okay. So they were chosen and agreed to be offered to the gods in order to save their country. They were led to the altar to be sacrificed. And before they were sacrificed, Persephone and Hades took pity on them and turned them into comets? All right. Yeah, okay. There's also a tale of a a Cohen nymph named Echamia who ceased to honor Artemis. And it's unclear what these mean, what this actually means because the like a fragment of her story survives from mm-hmm. a Roman mythographer, Hygienius, which sounds like a joke name. I promise it's not. <laughs> and I'm probably mispronouncing it. But it, it might be that uh, the nymph took a husband, Merops, and maybe she used to follow Artemis, but by getting married, that offended the goddess. Uh-huh. So she, sh- so she, Artemis, shoots the nymph with an arrow. But before the arrow strikes her, Persephone grabs the nymph and brings her to the underworld instead. <laughs> yoink. <laughs> <laughs> yoink! Which is interesting because it feels like the end game is the same whether she... But I guess if she's a nymph, if she dies, does she go to the underworld or does she just cease to exist? <laughs> no one likes Well, I mean, this. as far as I'm aware, nymphs, when they die, they just cease to exist? Maybe. That's it's what unclear. I was, that's what always kind of what I thought. Yeah. Because the nymph is tied to their tree river yeah whatever yeah mountain sometimes mm-hmm. those nymphs live forever <laughs> yeah mountains for real, for don't real. disappear <laughs> oh really <laughs> so those are and so yeah perception i want to try it but you joins know. <laughs> these nymphs into the underworld <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? <laughs> I wanna, what? Hel- helena tried to disappear but did not oh, succeed no. Did you know? Or Mount St. Helen or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, Mount St. Helens. It tried to disappear, but that was not a magic act that could, could be done properly. Up. The prestige. It's close, though. Half of it's gone. God damn. Huh, it's Percy's fault, too. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> why that That's a weird thing for Rick it's to do. It's a weird thing that Rick did. And so, yeah. That's Persephone. She's not to be trifled with. No, she's not. But simultaneously... She, we trifle with her. Well, no. Well, yes. <laughs> she gets trifled with by modern yeah. folks a lot. It, which I would say, uh, it feels like it is, especially as we talked a lot about Demeter and then the Persephone story and how it like recenters like Hades and Persephone mm-hmm. at the expense of Demeter and Persephone's relationship being important. I also think re- it often recenters Persephone as... Agency and power through becoming queen of the underworld. But as we talked about earlier, mayhaps not necessary. Yeah. Mayhaps you have a figure who is always Persephone and but always what? queen of the underworld and goddess of spring. Yeah. Like it would be very. She in- better have a story of becoming, but she was always that way. Yeah. And then the hero sent as like. Being in the underworld, where it, it maybe is almost as if, wait, why does 
dot well, like maybe it could be like the taking of Persephone is a story that was established to explain how the goddess of spring is also queen of the underworld. I don't know. Rather than how did the goddess spring become the queen of the underworld? Yeah. Why is she both? I think is interesting. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. I wonder what would tie spring to queen, right? I mean, that is the time of like like life and the idea of queen and mother being the bringer of life and because the queen is the one who it could be like a representation of two sides of the same coin where Mm -hmm. on one side is spring the other side is fall slash decay yeah yeah i think that's especially with we talked about in their um the festival we talked about in the demeter episode that was like central to persephone and demeter i mean shit isn't um the norse hella kind of similar to that too yes kind of I don't know. No. I said all of the answers. Well, the only reason I bring that up is uh, Smite, I know, I'm well aware it's not something that should be like sorted as, what's the term I'm thinking of? Scholar material or whatever. Academic. Academic material. But their depiction of Hela is, in fact, that there, she has an evil damaging side and a good healing side. Mm. And even like her earliest iteration before her rework, she was split down the middle with a lighter and a darker side. Interesting. Yeah. And I've seen... And then in, um, uh, what's it? Senua's Hellblade? A yes. Hellblade Senua's story. Hela shows up and she is also like kind of... She's freaky as fuck. Because she's, mm-hmm. like, she's skeleton. Yeah. But she's also kind of split a little. We will get into that, I'm sure, uh, literally next year. Yes. When we start to cover the Magnus Chase. When does Hella show up in that? She does, doesn't she? Does she not? I, I think they're did. referenced. I think they reference Hell, but I don't think Hella shows up. I don't know. I don't remember. It'll be fine. We're going to read them yep. next year. We're li- well, yeah, we're get, we'll get started literally next year. I was looking at our calendar and it's like, Thank oh, you. yeah. So, Laura Olympus. Yeah. Gotta. Absolutely amazing. This is wonderful. Super. I like Persephone in that one a lot. Yeah. we That one is very much like, how does the goddess of spring become the bringer of death? Yeah. And we get, well, one time, some she nymphs got, very angry. <laughs> got killed and things got out of hand. And nymphs a bunch got of killed were... at a very bored time for Persephone. Yeah. And uh, a bunch of humans died. Yeah. <laughs> things broke real bad. And I do, this is something we talked about. We just did a remit episode about volume five of the yeah. World Olympics. Uh, graphic novels, how it establishes the, the the shift of core to Persephone predates her becoming queen, coming to the underworld. Yeah, and how it, that all ties into like she's always been this. This is a, a well, she didn't always kill a bunch of mortals one day. No, no, no. no. But, but she's always had it in her. Yeah, the to do like this for that yeah. and the I, I like that she is Persephone. Upon entering the underworld, like that element of her identity mm-hmm. is already is already hers. Yeah, I think that really leans into this concept of it wasn't coming to the underworld. It wasn't the that underworld made, that did it. Yeah, that yeah, that coming to the underworld is not what made her queen of it. She was always going to be queen of it. Yeah, and that is, I think, and it death. might even be therapeutic for who knows. Maybe she'll get into torturing the souls. No, <laughs> no, but also it's like she's the one that creates Elysium. Yeah. I'm not, I don't know if she's had a chance to create it yet in Laura no, Lewis, no, 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 but no. before the big trial, she showed that she had like plans. I have plan- for- and everyone's like, she had plans to undermine you. I was like, no, I had plans to work aside him. Yeah, like here's, I thought that we could like, have Like I thought nice- I could pitch this to you and like we could have a place for exceptional mortals. It'd be great. Yeah. Spoilers, by the way, for Laura Olympus. It's fine. It's fine. That's spoilers if if you're was, only reading the books yeah yeah but i can't help you with that you can read them you can hop on different i promise you'll like it it's not on daily pass yet get on it before you gotta it get on it <laughs> but also the okay we won't talk about the stuff that's behind the i don't even remember currently. what's behind the power right now so but yeah so we have the 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 persephone creating elysium or wanting to create elysium which i like a lot and yeah. bringing a lot and then after the trial and everything goes wrong and Zeus has banished her. Huh. You see Poseidon grabbing Zeus and screaming, you just banished the closest thing the underworld had to a queen. Yeah. And then we also get to see, what is it? <laughs> the fucking party Hades had set up. The <gasps> welcome <gasps> home party. Yeah, Because Apollo fucked it up. It was yeah. going to be fine. They were going to be fine. I'm going to give, here's again, 
when uh, Apollo shows up and announces that, like, oh, I'm Zeus's son, uh-huh. Zeus completely ignores Apollo and goes, Artemis is my daughter? Yeah, no, he doesn't give a fucking damn about... There's no fuck like... Again, Zeus, not the greatest guy. No. But he's not the biggest piece of shit either. Could be worse. He could be way not, worse. That's not a compliment, but... It's a little bit of a compliment, because again, <laughs> I will I will give him so much credit for being like, Artemis is my daughter? That was very good. Yeah, I like that a lot, and um, it's a good moment. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and it's like, because... In it, it's it is really leaning on Persephone as a fertility goddess because like in Olympus the lore has been established that in order to rule, like you need the power of a fertility goddess, like that is it was uh, fucking the sky and Gaia, what the hell is the sky? Um, Uranus. Yeah. And Gaia, and then Kronos teamed up with Rhea, and then Zeus, Zeus- ate Rhea. Uh, Minthi. Min- not not Minthi. No, Minthi. M- Mentis. Metis, yeah. Mentis, yeah, Metis. And now there's Persephone, who is rumored to be a fertility goddess. Who is a fertility who, who is, goddess. Who is, yeah, yeah. yeah, who is a fertility goddess, but in the culture, like, it's not, no one yeah, knows yeah, it yeah. yet. But Demeter knows it. And that's why she's Demeter so desperate Demeter knows it, Harry's, hi- Ares knows it. That's why she's so desperate to hide yeah. Persephone. And, and then um, Apollo suspects Apollo kn- it. Apollo knows it. Apollo knows. And so, and then Zeus knows that Apollo has been like after Persephone. And then when he rose up and one, I'm, you know, your son, thus having a rightful heir to the throne. And he's been after Persephone. That suddenly like Zeus realizes, nope. And I think pause because I don't know what Apollo Apollo, planning. I'm going to tell you right now, you're not even the oldest son of Zeus. No. I'm sure Ares right now is holding that spot. Maybe Hephaestus. Yeah, but, but I don't know. We don't know. It. Yeah, yeah. So he banishes. Ares might, but yeah, he's he, not going to get it. <laughs> yeah, he banishes Persephone to make sure Apollo can't get at her. Yeah. Which isn't great, but no. it's so, I think that lore is so interesting because it does like simultaneously like Persephone is choosing the underworld and choosing these things, but there is still this thing that has been bestowed upon her that she still has to grapple with. Yeah. And, and she I, does that when she grabs a pomegranate. And she grabs the pomegranate, y'all. If you have not read Laura Olympus. Summons the, the embodiment of Tartarus to come and eat Kronos. Eat Kronos. It's fucking she awesome. She becomes massive. Oh, that sequence where Kronos is trying to put her down and call her new. I think she's like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought the crown and the earrings would have tipped you off. This is my realm. Yeah. I am so good. And so I love also how she becomes queen of the underworld without marrying Hades. Like, she, by eating the pomegranate. Well, I mean, like, that's how... That's uh, how Hades she became, became king. Yeah, like it was established, he became king to control the underworld, giving up something. the ability to sire an heir. Yeah. for the power, this. and so Persephone, in order to defeat Kronos and rescue Hades and all the underworld, she takes. She's like, "I'll give you. I'll I'll make a deal too." And yeah. she gets the power. It's so good, and her dress is so strong. good, and everything is so good. good. But I love so much that, like I said, Laura Olympus is so much a story about recentering Persephone's power. Yeah. And does that so successfully, wherein she is queen of the underworld without marrying Hades. Yeah. Like, she just is. And that's so interesting because that's not how it works for her. But we also saw it established that it could have been what Demeter got. Because Demeter wanted to become queen of the earth. She just needed everyone to sign some paperwork and agree upon it. And Hades convinced Poseidon and Zeus to vote against her. Mm -hmm. And so... It's kind of an established that marriage isn't ne- isn't a necessity for those royal titles. It's something more abstract. Yeah. And I like that Persephone gets to be queen of the underworld without marrying Hades. I also like that they get married, gang. Don't get me oh, wrong. Oh, yeah. They get married. It's, it's so, very sweet. Oh, it's so good. It's so beautiful. Everyone's there. Except so, for, you know, Demeter, Demeter. But that's... By her, she did yeah. this. <laughs> she did this. <sighs> beautiful. Anyway. Do you want to talk about Persephone and Smite? Persephone and Smite. She is a mage. There is, in fact, not a single Greek big three member. And I, when I say member, I mean their wives and husband. And mm-hmm. Their wives are big three, too. Yeah. Uh, that's not a mage. <laughs> Why are they all mages? Probably because, if I'm being entirely honest, I mean, Hades used to be a guardian, but he played more like a mage. So they changed him to mage. Uh huh. But it's like Zeus. I guess they could have done a warrior Zeus, but that's no fun. <sighs> Poseidon, again, I guess a warrior, but where's the fun in that? Is it just more fun? It's just more fun. Okay. Uh, Hera does summon Argus, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> and then Persephone, the way that she works is that she summons a bunch. Just like, look at this shit. Look at this ad. Takes up half my fucking screen. Yes, yeah, that's. And if sucks. I try to get rid of that, it's just going to be a white ad that says ad closed by Google. And it doesn't disappear. That's not optimized for mobile. 
No, it's not. It fucking sucks. So she, she can place down like a bunch of these like seeds that are pomegranate seeds that have two stages. Stage one, if she hits it with like a basic attack or a different kind of ability, it like comes back to her and heals her. And stage two, it sprouts up into a little like skeleton root thing mm-hmm. and it charges forward if you hit it and it uh does like damage to an enemy if they get into like a certain area or around it nice a lot of fun super annoying but good damage not as good as she used to be oh they reworked her a couple of years back where it, her pomegranates used to have three stages in between those there was a second stage where they would just blow up ah! and when bum, they bum. would blow up they would do so much damage and she was much more interesting to play and like harder to play. Mm-hmm. But whatever, it's fine. Do you want to hear her lore? I would love to be here. Please, please tell yeah. me her. I, re- I read it. We were doing Hades. And I was like, so jazz. <laughs> let's go. Yeah. Persephone is the goddess of vegetation and the harvest. Daughter of Zeus and Demeter, the other gods often felt fit to decide her fate for her. Demeter enrolled her in helping with her mysteries while Zeus took it upon himself to give her away. Hades, her husband-to-be, came up from the underworld and took her away. Demeter, saddened by the loss of her daughter and helper, wept and refused to bring and refused to continue bringing life to the earth. Cornered by a dying world, Zeus forced Hades and Persephone to part. Before leaving the underworld, Hades offered her a seed of a pomegranate grown uh, in the underworld. Persephone was clever. She understood what was being offered. Those who eat food in the of the underworld are bound to it and must return. Hades was offering her a choice, a choice she was happy to accept. Every six months, Persephone leaves the underworld, soothing Demeter's grief and bringing life to back to the world. The time has now come for Persephone, queen of the underworld, to return and take her throne beside Hades. She has seen the gods struggle against themselves at the expense of those around them. She can no longer watch as droves of mortal souls arrive, their lives cut short while they struggled for each and every victory as the gods they pray to cause their suffering. Soon all the gods will see why she is called the Clever Persephone. I do love Clever Persephone. Clever Persephone is very good. Dread Persephone. <laughs> Dread Maybe Persephone I would a lot of fun. But I do like the, the Clever Persephone feels like a leaning into... Uh, the the writings of Plato that refer to her as wise. Yeah. So that feels intentional. I love the, because the Zeus one, or the, the Hades one is very specific of like kidnapping Persephone and stuff. Where in this one, it's more just like, hey, Hades did take her down there. Zeus said she could, but now he's making, Zeus is now making her leave. So Hades is like, if you want to stay here, you can. And I like the fact that he's like, hey. I did bring you here against your will. If you want to stay, you if you're gonna you can go, you can go. If you want to stay, here's how you can get to stay and make the choice. And she's like, Yeah, I want to be queen of the underworld. So pivoting to another Persephone in a video game, we gotta talk about Hades. Absolutely. She's so good. Mom, just mom yeah. vibes all around. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I love both of her outfits that I love her working on her little cottage and her farm. Mm-hmm. And then I love her queen of the underworld dress. <laughs> it's very good. It's very strong. Skulls and black and red. It's like, yeah, she's like, yeah, well, I am queen of the underworld. So I, I do dress the part. I gotta look the part. Mm-hmm. She's like, I miss. I like her to talk about how she missed the under. Okay. So hold on. Let's get to that. <laughs> so as you know, dear listener, as we have spoken about uh, many a time, many times, Zagreus is trying to escape the underworld to see his mom. Yes. And as I mentioned in the Demeter episode, when the first time you get out, it's winter. And you're like, what? Not supposed to be like that. But Persephone's up here. Well, then when we interact with Demeter for the first time, we quickly find out Demeter doesn't know where Persephone is Mm -hmm. at. So what's going on? In time, you find out that Persephone, uh, Zagreus was stillborn. Yeah. And Persephone was overwhelmed with grief, and she abandoned the underworld. And so then... Uh, Hades went to Nyx and Nyx was able to bring Zagreus back to life but it took a lot of time and a lot of her power to do so and by that time Persephone was long gone but Hades does know where she is but Zeus sent her to the underworld without consulting Demeter about it yeah sounds like Zeus and the reason Hades does not want Zagreus to go to Persephone is because he is worried, rightfully so, now that all the other gods are paying attention to him, that 
They'll find her. They will find her. If they find out, one, she's not in the underworld where Zeus said she was supposed to be, and two, she was sent to the underworld is now at a pier where Demeter's not. It'll create a war between the Olympus and the underworld, and everything will go wrong. And even Persephone herself is, like, hesitant to return to the underworld for those reasons. Yeah. But in time, you're able to convince her. Or about ten times of escaping. You escape ten times. On the tenth time, she is like, let's, you're right, let's go home. Because Zagreus convinces her yeah, but Hades still lo- Hades loves you. Yeah, and that's not the whole reason she goes back. But he like he has a picture of you on, next to his bed. Yeah, he probably is like is falling asleep, yeah. lying down, looking at it mm-hmm. as he's drifting off. Yep, and Zagreus is also like, I'm not going to stop coming up here to see you. So yeah, but she's so but it'd be when he... so much simpler if you would please return. Yeah, and so by on the tenth time when Zagreus arrives, Persephone's actually already packed and ready to go. Yeah. Like she's not being made she to calls do this. Karen to come All right, and so because it's so great because Zagreus. The way he gets back is he just dies because being dies, on the he just yeah. can't be out of the underworld. He just dies. So this time he doesn't have to die. He just takes the boat. He takes a boat ride with his mom. <laughs> it's so nice. And so she's like, okay, we will fix this. So she plans a party and invites everybody. Mm-hmm. It's just so. And good. you haven't seen no, the party I yet. Seen <laughs> Imagine it. not being able to see the party. She, it's hey, wonderful. Hey. <laughs> I thought I had to keep, I had to turn up the heat every time I wanted to escape. Uh, that's insane. I didn't know. That's insane. It just means the game. I thought that was. The t- it doesn't make sense. Well, it does. <laughs> you beat it with the gun. Well, now it has to be harder if you want to do it again. Well, now it has to be harder if you want to do it again. Well, now it has to be harder if you wanted to do it again. I didn't know I could just say it's no just to that. Rewards, yeah. It's so funny. Darren found that out. Like three weeks ago. <laughs> in front of people. In front of like four we people. Were it at, so fortunately, funny. it was just four people. Yeah. It was at the Boise Comic Arts Festival. We were putting on our Trial of Lore Olympus event. And, and I just collapsed. Uh, I was so yeah. upset. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> oh, I'll do it now. It's going to be great. Yeah, you'll, you'll get there. So, but I love, I really, again, I think this is a really interesting balancing act of Persephone fall of like following the myth of she lost she like was sent to the underworld and was mm-hmm. a character who didn't have a lot of agency from like her mother who was very like protective of her and Zeus who could actually do what she wants she was sent to the underworld but she did we do as she does say she didn't want to live in Olympus she did want to leave and so when Zeus was like you can go to the underworld and marry Hades she was in on that deal like it wasn't yeah. like Hades came up and kidnapped her but Hades is always really pissed off at Zeus for, for treating kind of just being like for treating Persephone like she was just some sort of bobble yeah. to be given out. Like, he's very angry that she was treated that yeah, way. Yeah, it definitely is probably one of those things where, like, Hades sidebarred with Zeus and was just like, oh, I can fix this problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's like, it wasn't a fucking problem, dude. I was just saying that this girl is cute. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I just asked, do you know her? I just asked if she was available, dude. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> So, but I do like, like, it's Persephone and she chose to leave. Suddenly I get a fucking Amazon package and I open it up and she's just knocked out in there. (laughs) That's not what I asked for. Hermes just brings me a box. What the fuck? It's a little heavy. I wasn't expecting it. It's Uh, ridiculous. So that's probably not exactly how it happened. But basically, uh, that's kind of how it happens in Punderworld, though. If you recall, uh, he mentioned, Hades mentions that there's this, there's this goddess he has a crush on. And so Zeus is like, no worries. I'll disguise myself as a horse and we'll kidnap her. And he's like, don't do that. So stop. And he actively has to stop and try to save Persephone, but they're going to crash. So he opens the thing to the underworld and that's how they go under. Yeah. It's very funny. And in that one, hey, y'all, Punderworld's great. It's also on Webtoons. You should, you should read it. Yeah. Uh, that one, there's like a bonus that talks about like, what if, because he, because Hades was going over just to specifically talk to Demeter yeah. about, I like your daughter. I'd like to marry her. And if he had actually successfully made it, Demeter was going to be kind of pissed at first, but when Persephone says, no, I really like him, she would have been like, all right, Hades, you can come back tomorrow and we'll discuss the labors <laughs> you're going to accomplish. Oh, you think you can't just leave right now? We have work to do. We do spring and summer, but you can come back tomorrow. And I really like that also take of Demeter where if Hades had got a chance to talk to her, Demeter would have been like, all right, Demeter first you're going to prove yourself. Hearing him out at yeah. least. We're going to prove yourself, see how willing you are, but also, or I'll hear you out. Like, I, I do just like a little that. bit of a fuck up in Ponderworld. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, which, where <laughs> isn't he? So can I talk about Girl Goddess Queen now? <laughs> I think this might be the last time I get to talk about Girl Goddess Queen. For a minute at For least. For a minute at least. It is the Persephone of it. Persephone is such a cool character uh-huh. in Girl Goddess Queen by B. Fitzgerald. My favorite Persephone. 
Nice. She's so interesting and and complex and really real. I suppose because you're literally in her head all the time. Mm -hmm. And so terrified of the future that's being thrust upon her a future that her mother has made her fear more and more with all the horror stories she's told her but not unjustly so but also so proactive so willing to be like i'm gonna go hide in the underworld because sounds like it's the only place where terrible things don't happen to young women mm -hmm. yeah actually good job and she meets hades and he's first like doesn't trust her and is gonna kick her out she calls upon that we talk about hest oh Hestia created it in Girl Goddess Queen, that concept of Xenia to be protected while she's under there. And it's so cool. Besides all the things that she does, which I've talked about them in various ways throughout the the different talking about her interacting with Hades and Demeter and, and Styx and stuff. The concept of Persephone has always been this, has yeah. always been what she is, is so very present in Girl Goddess Queen because... There's this idea that the gods, there are concepts of reality that choose gods. While Zeus is sitting there and gets to give the gods their their roles. He made Hades king of the underworld. Uh, he gave Persephone, your goddess of flowers. Right? I've talked about that where mm -hmm. she asked for the world and he gave her flowers. But the it's just because Zeus gave that to her doesn't mean that's all she is. It's become very clear that she's the goddess of life. Like not just like fertility and harvest yeah. but life and that is a concept that that shows her and so that is how she is able to create elysium and help the shades in the underworld and do all these things mm -hmm. but it's also why when she is not in the overworld and she like goes to the underworld and like marries hades and decides to stay there and be queen everything starts dying because she's not there and so finally zeus forces her to come up to have uh, a meeting. Because I think it's Demeter at first. And they don't know until they go up. And so Hades and Persephone go to Olympus to meet with Zeus and Demeter. And that is how it's revealed that, like, everything is dying because Persephone isn't here. And Zeus is still trying to play it off like it's not, like, whatever. But she does have to come back. He's like, so we'll just annul your marriage and it's fine. And Hades is like... But I don't want that. Oh, he's not. He's just, just, I don't want that. He's straight up like, oh, interesting. You're going to try to take away the queen of the underworld. I wonder how Poseidon and Oceanus would feel about you doing this. Like th Hades just coming up and like threatening the courts of the other kings. Yeah. Like if you're going to come up. Because that's take my queen, then I'm going to take their queen. No, what he'd do is go to get Poseidon to side with him for war against oh, yeah, Olympus. Probably. Like that's what it is. Because that's, 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 this, it, there's also this interesting power play where, yeah, Zeus gave them Oceanus and the underworld. And yeah, he could theoretically take it away too. But if he overstepped, he would find himself at war with the, the door just opened by itself. And I know that's just the way houses are, but I'm very upset. <laughs> Like, I know just because it wasn't closed all the way, there's probably a draft, but it was spooky. <laughs> House is haunted, Darren. It's that time. No. Well, yes. Welcome, ghosts. I love you. <laughs> so the so it's very like a threat where they're like, well, you can't keep her because. Demeter's you know, acting up. Well, not just Demeter's acting up, but without <laughs> no, like literally she she has to come back. Like, and it's. Yeah. Everything's clashing all at once. And also Persephone is suddenly realized like, oh, my God, like if things really break bad and he make if what if zeus drags me away and makes me leave then hades will declare war and they and it will everything is about to erupt so she one realizes that she could easily kill zeus yeah. being the goddess of life she could just snuff it out of him immediately and thus continue the cycle of children killing their fathers and taking over and i'm not saying that's what I wish she did, but I am saying that's what it's I wish she line. did. I am saying the series ended, this book ended with Persephone as Queen of Olympus. I'm just <laughs> saying let's mix it up a bit. Instead, she shoves him to the side, lunges over to the basket of pomegranates they brought as a peace offering, and just bites Shh. into one. And like before anyone can stop her which because it's been mentioned a couple times if you eat food of the underworld you'll be bound to it so she's always been really careful not to do that and hades is really careful not to accidentally like serve anything that has it like it's yeah hasn't been a thing that harped on but like once they're having their eating he's like don't eat the bread the wheat was grown down here and like stuff like that and so just like knocks everything over and just like bites 
Have you, DJ, you're familiar with a pomegranate. Yeah, it's a regular thing to actually bite into and a pomegranate. And she just bites into it full You at least on. get some of the juices, but it's not going to be a pleasant experience. No, but, and then Zeus is livid. He's so angry. And he's like, well, we'll just force you to stay up here anyway. It doesn't matter. But what, so Literally he, cannot. So he gets Athena and he's like, what does this actually mean? And Athena tells him that, oh, well, it's like, it's like part of the natural law. It's like part of sacred law. If it's to be broken, it could threaten all of us. We would all become unraveled. So, and it's also interesting. It's a very good non-answer to give when writing a story and you don't know what to put there. Well, I also, my theory is I think Athena lied. Oh, no. Because when she shows up, Persephone looks at her and thinks about how Perse- uh, Athena has all of this power and all this freedom so long as she never crosses Zeus. Mm-hmm. And she will always be the woman who will support her father no matter what he does because she was, would be afraid of losing her power so she won't help persephone mm-hmm. when zeus is forcing her in her marriages even though athena gets to not have to do that same with artemis and hestia yeah uh, so i i'd like because when she leaves after athena tells zeus that and this is like fine we'll be in the underworld for half the year get out of my sight all of you when Athena leaves, she smiles at Persephone. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. I think, I don't think she, I think something bad would have happened if, I think there is something there, but I think it just would have been bad for Persephone, personally. Yeah, I don't think it's, I don't but, think it would affect anybody. I but think she would Zeus, unravel. Zeus wouldn't care. It had to be something that would hurt him yeah, to yeah. get him to care. So I think Athena lied. Yeah, I, or sense. she exaggerated or she left something. She's like, it could be this, something she knew would get Zeus to let Persephone do what she wanted. Yeah. Anyway, I just want to. Talk, I just want to say that because I like that very much. But yeah, uh, Persephone is the fucking best in Girl Goddess Queen. She's so unbelievably cool, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a good book. Very yeah. good book. I got two things. Yeah. One of them's for me. One of them's for you. Oh, it's a present for me. Uh yeah. So Persephone does actually show up in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Classic. In the first DLC, because you have to delve into the layers of the underworld, and Mm -hmm. the first one is Elysium, obviously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she's the one who made it and built it, well, duh, and rules it, right? So in order to delve deeper, you have to go have a court with her. And she looks pretty cool. Wow. She does look really cool. I've never seen her design before. Oh, because they're not real, right? Uh, Yeah. Because she also looks like a robot. Here's the thing about it. They have immense power and they can, like, because we see Hermes and Hermes has, like, a ton of power. Yeah. But they're not gods per se, but they are real. I don't know. Are they AI? Like, are they computer programs? Assassin's Creed is so fucking weird. (laughs) (laughs) Like. Yeah. And hey, Darian, do you want to tell us about the Wicked and the Divine? Oh, my God. I would love to tell you about the Wicked and the Divine. What? Okay. Wow. I haven't talked about Wicked and Divine since Dionysus. Yeah. <gasps> it's been so long. It's been a very long so time. So the Wicked and Divine. I'm pretty sure we I wouldn't doubt if we've skipped over one or two. <laughs> Probably. Um, there is an Athena yeah. in it. And I just well, because the thing is like I haven't read it in so long. So I just like it's That's fair. That's what hey, that's why I've talked about Girl Goddess Queen eight episodes in a row. <laughs> Cause I just read it many times. No, but um so the only thing I know about us is Persephone is like a fucking wrench in this machine yeah, yeah. <laughs> so per, so in this concept you have every x amount of years or so a couple decades i don't remember not a not quite a hundred years but more than 50 like 80. yeah something like that a um like a dozen young people are suddenly reborn as gods but they weren't always the god except yes they were always the god it's kind of confusing also i never finished it but <laughs> Uh, they become essentially amazing pop idols, and everybody is so obsessed with them. There are some people who are insistent that, like, they're not gods, they're lying, this is crazy, this is ridiculous, but, like, they have they powers. Have the power they have these powers, these and they have these identities, and this, the, the main, what is the main girl's name? Oh, my I don't God. Remember. But she is Persephone, yeah? Yeah, so, um, so the first chunk of story follows Laura. Okay, her name's Laura. And then... One of the the gods, Lucifer, ends up deciding, hey, you and I are friends now. So that's how <laughs> she ends up falling in with them all. Yeah. But things go bad and Lucifer is accused of murder. And 
it's complicated and it's I got to reread it. I haven't read it in so long. But essentially, Laura ends up discovering she is Persephone. Mm -hmm. She's not supposed to be because they're supposed to only be, let's say, I don't think it's 12, but let's say they're only supposed to be 12. And there's the reporter who's insisting that these gods aren't real ends up being the 12th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she is the the, the fate of the, the Nords. Mm, she's nice. one of the Norn, and so it's she's and so Lauren's like so disappointed because she so wanted to be her, and then at the end of the it, 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 she is Persephone, but then she's killed. But then you find out she's not. It was a cover up. Someone saved her. They've been hiding because she's not like you just had DJ. She is the wrench in the system. She is the destroyer. She's not supposed to be there, but she is. So she threatens whatever this cycle actually is. Yeah. And I assume the series is about ending this cycle. Maybe I should finish it. <laughs> Listen, the art's beautiful, though. Oh, yeah. The cover, it's just gorgeous. I remember reading that one right there. Oh, the, yeah, I think I did yeah. have you read this one. Yes. But yeah, she, yeah, she, she is, God, <laughs> it's really good. It's really good. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I just gushed and didn't have like more concrete. But yeah, I think, yeah, yeah they, so she is Persephone the Destroyer. It's very much, and that is like, her being there is a threat to like I said whatever it is and I like the use of her it's also because Persephone is also sometimes is like chaos bringer it's how it's like in girl goddess queen Mm -hmm. is how it's like the translation they use is core starts going by Persephone because Zeus calls her chaos bringer and so she just starts calling herself Persephone meaning chaos bringer Mm. so Persephone in like wicked and divine is very much used as chaos and when they are voting on whether they are gonna like kind of try to figure out the mystery of what was happening or just live until they die. She's the deciding vote and she votes for chaos. Let's just mm-hmm. anarchy. Let's just live until we die. I don't care about the truth. Oh, that's kind of cringe. <laughs> it's <laughs> They're all traumatized teenagers. I'm well aware, but it's still kind of cringe. <laughs> Get to very... the bottom of this shit. You if, think... you have, if you have an opportunity to understand why this, like, however long cycle has been going, why not? Just solve Let's it. Let's run it. Let's figure it out. But if you know you're, if you know you were gonna die within two years, do you want to spend all your time running it, or do you want to spend your time just fucking living? If there's the, ch- if I have like godly powers, mm-hmm. and there's a chance that if I get to the bottom of it, I can live. Why not? That's true. There's no gear. I think because they're not trying to. Fi- they're trying to figure out what the puppet master was doing not necessarily why this like cycle. a 13th one shows up now yeah <laughs> that's super interesting to me yeah things are wild <laughs> it's been 12 for how long yeah and then she rolls up and it's it's always different it's never the same gods it's always different yeah, yeah. kinds of gods and i think there have been ones in the past that have shown up again but it's cool that she's the breaking point yeah so thank you dj <laughs> i forgot about Wicked yeah, i was going through the thing and i saw Wicked, and i'm like right she was there Here's I'm sure Darren will be happy about this one. Yes, I gotta finish it. I will. I will. I gotta go pick up the rest of the. I'll just reread it all. That'll be a fun one to do. Yeah. She is the final boss in a God of War game. Game I haven't played. There's the name of a dwarf planet called Persephone. Mm. It was the tenth planet, quote quote, discovered after Pluto. That was around the time we were establishing Pluto, not a planet. These are all dwarf planets, but I like yeah. that. Thank you all so much for listening. This is a good episode. Thanks, DJ. Nice I thought so long. too. Yeah, I was I wasn't sure where we would swing, but the Dread Queen Persephone. Absolutely. So good. Just so good. So rich. In, Just so much. Um, plenty of popular culture. Yeah, she is an excellent character. And I think there's a lot of angles you can take with her, and I like all of them. Yeah. Very much. It's all a good time. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Until next time, don't be like Zeus. Don't be like Zeus. Muses of Mythology is created and hosted by Darren and DJ Smart. It's edited by Darren Smart. The show is produced by Darren and DJ Smart, as well as Tim O'Connor, The Crystal Con Man, Nicholas Miller. Our music is Athens Festival by Martin Hay, and our cover art is by Audrey Miller. You can find her at on Instagram at bombshell nutshell art. Want more Muses of Mythology? Support the show on Patreon. Just one dollar gets you exclusive bonus content. Get more at patreon.com forward slash Muses of Mythology. You can also support the show by leaving a review at lovethepodcast.com forward slash muses of mythology or tell a friend why you love the show. Don't forget to check out all of our episodes and episode transcripts at musesofmythology.com. Thanks for listening.